Hey guys, how's it going? Mark here from Mixit Studios. Welcome to the channel if you're new. So I've done a few reaction videos so far now. I um, had some good feedback from you guys, so thanks for watching and any of you who've commented. I've had a few recommendations now, so we're going to take a look at one of these today. I know that some of you guys said that with the other reactions I've done, I'd already heard the songs before. Um, I get that the, the reaction format is, you know, it's about first time reactions to stuff and not having heard stuff before obviously that's a little bit difficult to do when you're picking the videos yourself unless you happen to come across something that you've not heard before and also you know working with the youtube algorithms you're trying to find something that is going to get people watching um so it's got to be something that other people are going to be looking for as well so um yeah i appreciate some of you guys hitting up the comments and giving me some recommendations we're going to take a look at a guy called chris turner i search for him on youtube and uh, there are a few chris turners so i think i'm i'm pretty sure i've got the right one this guy is a drummer from a band i think uh, oceans 8 alaska who i'd not heard of before and uh, this is his solo stuff the track is called 40 roll all i know and this is what kind of intrigued me and made me want to take a look at this track um this guy is a drummer and it all the re recordings are done um one take uh, no sort of triggering going on or quantization like snapping to the grid so i think this should be quite interesting definitely very interested in the drum production i'm um, also intrigued to see what else is going on with the track so yeah we're going to take a listen this is 40 roll by chris turner Okay, not what I was expecting so far. Okay. Nice. Okay. Cool, yeah, yeah, I like this so far. This is definitely, uh, I can see why this was recommended to me based on the uh, Polyphia video I did. Definitely that kind of mixing uh, like rap and trap and those kind of genres with metal genres. This is definitely much more metal than Polyphia is. Um, I think Polyphia are more from that uh, kind of shred background, whereas this is more like straight up metal. Yeah. It's cool. I like it so far. Uh, the drums, I think this just goes to show that you, uh, I get that, you know, triggered drums, doing stuff to the grid is very much about a certain production style and achieving a certain sound um, that is definitely geared towards certain genres of music in particular, um, you know, rock and heavier genres primarily totally has its place got nothing against it. I think if you're looking to achieve that sound, then it's definitely an avenue to getting there but this straight away just goes to show if this is totally like nothing going on production wise post-production wise like that with triggering or anything yeah this sounds great and just goes to show if you've got a really great drummer and a great en engineer recording it then it's possible to achieve those kind of results love the guitar Beefy, chuggy. Okay, some nice sub drops there. Cool, yeah, nice transition there. I'd like to hear some of those sort of lead guitar parts a little louder in the mix. Snare's really nice, like super snappy, really tight sounding. It's cool. Nice. Yeah, going back. 
Yeah, I'd definitely like to hear some of those um, lead guitar bits a little stronger. Um, guitar tone overall is killer, like really chuggy, beefy sounding, nice sort of stereo imaging going on with the guitars. And the drums sound killer as well, like exactly what you'd expect from this type of production. And super tight, he's obviously a great drummer. Um, and I like a lot of those transitions there. You know, it went to uh, a minute ago, like a more kind of melodic transition. Uh, went back into like the trap sort of backing. Yeah, there's some nice, nice stuff going on here. Okay, I wasn't even watching the video. So this is him. I assume doing it live, this was the actual take. Ah. Very interesting. Nice, nice double kick as well. Nice breakdown, okay. So a lot of the, um, now that I've just noticed the video, paid a bit of attention to that, a lot of the mic choices on the drums are pretty, uh, pretty typical, what I would expect really. Yeah, 57s on, on both snare top and bottom. I think it's some like 451Bs on the overs. On the toms, the Sennheisers, I don't know why the model name is escaping me at this moment in time. Uh, I'm having a bit of a brain fart today, but yeah, pretty standard for what I'd expect, um, but very nicely captured, yeah. I want to know what's on the kick. Um, okay. That's it, that's, uh, yeah, quite, a, quite an abrupt ending. I liked that though. Yeah, that was really cool. I dig that. I want to listen to it some some more just to let it sink in a little bit. But my first reaction to that was that, yeah, very cool. If that is, as it suggests, uh, with the video, that was him playing. That was the take that he recorded. Um, that's really cool. You know, I like, obviously it makes sense for him as a drummer, promoting himself as a drummer um, to sort of gear things around that um, and, and really push that kind of live take kind of thing. Particularly for the genre, I think it is very impressive that they managed to capture that kind of sound that's typically associated with some kind of triggering and snapping to the grid. So yeah, super cool. Generally, I think, you know, the whole production, apart from a few, I mean, it's all very subjective, but a few sort of mixed choices with some of those lead guitar parts. I think a lot of the backing stuff, when that wasn't the primary focus, like with the intro, and then it dropped back to that a few times. I think all that stuff was kind of at the right level where, you know, that wasn't the primary focus. It was just kind of there and it was sat nicely, like bedded into everything. But yeah, very cool. I like this a lot. Uh, so yeah, thanks for the recommendation. Uh, if you guys have any other tracks you'd like me to cover, then holler at me in the comments. I don't know why I said holler. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just dropping an extra bit in here because I just checked through the video to make sure it all recorded okay. And hearing the track again made me a little more focused on the drums. Uh, I think first listen through, I was just kind of taking in everything overall. So I was able to Hone in a little more on the drums second listen um, and you can definitely, I can tell that this is a live take and that there isn't a lot of the things triggering and so on usually associated with this kind of production. I don't mean that in a bad way, um, I think it's a great performance captured really well. I actually kind of like the way it's, it's captured but I, it does sort of make me recognise that there is is this is very 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 close to that kind of sound but there still is that slight difference because you have something where there is uh, no matter how tight and machine like a drummer is there is still those kind of natural nuances and and also in the way i think you know microphones pick up a 
live performance that is also a big part of it as well because uh, triggered drums just don't work the same way i would liken it to in most modern pop productions a singer's vocal will be pitch corrected regardless of whether it actually really needs it because it's almost seen as just part of the kind of extra sheen on a, a vocal a modern vocal like pop production so you'll you'll have you know great singers like i don't know beyonce or you know really good pop singers um who who definitely don't need any pitch correction uh but a natural vocal performance no matter how pitch perfect you are there are going to be some subtle nuances in that maybe there's some slight wavering in pitch when you're sustaining a no yeah it, it is it's the extra kind of sheen um and artificialness that you just won't get from something um live and natural and not altered in that way like with modern pop and vocal pitch production um with heavier genres of music and drum processing uh you know snapping to the grid triggering and so on these are just things that are seen as part of you know the things need that kind of level of artificialness where it's often defaulted to and not necessarily thought about whether that is necessary or not um sometimes it is but you know it's it's nice to see somebody approaching it in a different way and saying like well okay maybe you know, I could do that, but I could also try it this way. Um, so yeah, it was a really interesting listen. Well, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. This was Chris Turner, uh, 40 roll. Very cool. I really liked it.